Welcome back to Math 20-2. Today we're starting our first lesson on entire radicals and mixed radicals. Okay, So right here is a little warm-up for you to do on square roots and cube roots because we're just going to look at square roots and cube roots with radicals. Now here we go. Without using a calculator, it wants you to express each of these. So the first one we want, the square root of 64. Well, I like to do my factor trees and figure out what pairs, because there's an imaginary 2 here, what pairs make up 64? Multiply together, you get 64. And if we do that, it's 8 and 8. So this is actually equal to 8. Okay? Negative 64, that means to get a negative, we need a negative multiplied by a positive. Well, the two numbers have to be identical. So they both either have to be negative or both positive. So there is no answer. Okay? There's no answer for that. The next one here we have the negative outside, so once the square root of 64, as we found before, was 8 and 8, so it's 8, then we multiply it by negative 1, so that gives me negative 8. Okay? Here we look at the next one, is it wants the cube root, so we need triplets. So first we could go 8 and, or I'm going to go 8 and 8. Well, I'm going to break it down, this is 2 and 4, and this here is 2 and 4. Well, this 2 and that 2 make another 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the same thing as 4. Now, if I look at this, we want the cube root. Three numbers that are the same. If I went negative 4 multiplied by negative 4, that is positive 16. Multiplied by negative 4, that is negative 64. So my answer for this one is equal to 16, or sorry, is equal to negative 4. Okay? This one here, if we look at it, it could also be negative 8. So this could be actually plus or minus negative 8. Okay? Because negative 8 multiplied by negative 8 is 64. Let's take a look at this next one. We want the cube root of with the negative on the outside. Well, the cube root of 64 is 4, and then we multiply it by negative 1. We are going to end up getting negative 4. We're going to answer for that one as well. All right. So here, let's look at number two. So we're going to use the feature in our calculator. I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to use the square root or the cube root feature. Okay. So on our calculator, I'm just going to show you the keystrokes. We want the cube root of 729. Okay. So for me, I just go. We know 729 is the same as the power of one third. I'm going to go 729 to the power of 1 divided by 3. And that will give me 9. Okay? There is a cube root function on your calculator. I just tend not to use it. So let's look at the next one. We want the square root of 196. So square root. I know where that one is, so I'm just going to say square root, 196, and I'm going to get 14. And our last one is the cube root of all of that. So I want to make sure it's all in brackets. There's my thing. So we're going to have in brackets 512 divided by 343, okay, all to the power of. 3. Oops, sorry, not to the power of 3. Sorry, we've got to redo this. 1 third. So, bracket 5, 1, 2, divided by 3, 43, all to the power of 1 divided by 3. I'm going to get 1.14. Okay? Or, or we could have done this this. This is the cube root of 512 and cube root of 343. So we could have gone 512 to the 1 divided by 3, and which is 8. And then we could have gone 343 to the power of 1 divided by 3, which is 7. So it also is the same thing as 8 over 7. And if I put 8 over 7 in the calculator, I'm going to get the same thing as 1.14. Alright? Next question. So those are my two answers. Next question is, evaluate to the nearest hundredth. So this one here we want to evaluate to the nearest hundredth. 
So all of this, so we're going to have a decimal. The other one here, you want to get the exact value. As soon as it says exact value, leave it in fractions. Exact value means fractions or whole numbers. Okay, round to the nearest hundredth. So let's go 52. So we're going to second square root, and we'll have 52. And I'm going to get 7.21. And we want the cube root of 71. So I'm just going to go 71 to the 1 divided by 3, which is 4.14. OK? Now here are some definitions for you. The whole thing is called a radical. This little number here is, a ra is an index, and the number inside is the radical. So when it says identify the index and the radicand in each of the following, well, the index is that little guy there. The index is 3. The radicand is 123. Okay? The radicand always is the number inside the house. The index is always a little tiny number. The index tells you how many you're taking out, how many pairs or triplets or quadruplets you need. So this one right here, there's no index number. If you don't see one, there's an imaginary 2. So the index is 2, and the radicand is 77. So this one here, index is 3, and the radicand is negative 1 over 2. This 8 has nothing to do with the index or radicand. So I'm going to first start this one. I'm going to work in reverse. Uh, you guys could do this first, but I'm going to start this and then work back into that one now. Right. So if I do this, we're going to say, 6 times uh, multiplied by, does that equal to 18? Well, if we try it, let's see, what is 6 multiplied by 18? Okay, so we're going to check this out. So I'm going to go second root 6, enter, multiply by second root 1, 8. Oops. By 3, root 3. I'm going to get 4.24. Now let's try the square root of 18. 4.24. So they are the same. So this is true. So basically if I go like this, if we multiply two radicands together, that's the same as multiplying them together on the inside. So this is essentially the same thing as equals root 6 multiplied by 3 is equal to root 18. So that is true. So we can make this equal to that. Okay. And then we have root 1, 8 is equal to 2. So this is true. Okay? Let's try the other one. The other one starts off here with addition. So what we do first, this is my exponent, so we first add what's in the inside first. So 36 plus 64 is going to give me 100. So this is the same thing as square root 100, which is equal to 10. Let's try the other side. Well, what is the square root of 36? 6. What is the square root of 64? Huh. I look at that now, and I'm going to get this plus this is 14. Does 14 equal 10? No, so that's not true. So every time, right here, when we're adding, we could try with this one. Is that true? This is not equal. This is equal. That one's not equal. Okay, let's look at C. Here, this line means what? It's the same thing as division. So we're looking at that one there. Well, what is the square root of 60? And we're going to go over the square root of 6. So what is the square root of 60? If we put in a calculator, it is 7.7 .7. all over square root of 6. is 3.16. So this side here is equal to 3.16. Now let's check the square root of 10. And I'll put it right there so you can see. And that gives me 3.16. So they are the same answer. So this is true. So the division is equal as well. Now this subtraction, isn't subtraction and addition kind of the same thing? They're just ones adding subtraction is just like adding negative numbers. 
So this one's going to be not equal as well. So we can't simplify this into this. But for division, we can simplify like that. And for multiplication, we can simplify like that. So those are our general rules, okay? And we'll see why we need those later on. So here we go. We're going to look at this mixed, uh, we're going to look at this radical here, and we're going to convert it to a mixed. So we start off. What is the square root of 36? Well, and 30, this is the same as root 36 multiplied by 2, right? So that is root 2. Now what is the square root of 36? Is 6. Square root of 2 is, well, we have to keep it like that, root 2. That is our exact answer. Here's another way of doing it. They separate into 4 and 18. They went this way. And then 18 is the same as 2 and 9. So that's 3 root 2, which is the same as 2 times 3 is 6 root 2. Okay? So now we're going to do this without the help of our friendly little textbook. We're just going to try and do this one on our own. So we want 160. So what are two numbers that are factors of 160? Well, we could say 10 and 16 are probably the easiest. So I'm going to say this is equal to root 10 multiplied by root 16. Well, what is root 16 equal to? That's equal to 4. So it's 4 multiplied by root 10. So it's the same thing as 4 root 10. Okay? Let's try now 3 root 98. Oh, that's... So this could probably be simplified more, can't it? So what is 98 equal to? I'd say 49 times 2. So this is the same as 3 multiplied by root 49 multiplied by root 2. Okay? Because 49 times 2 is 98. What is the square root of 49? 7. So then we multiply these together, our whole numbers, because we can only multiply numbers that have the same exponents together, right? So that's 21 root 2. Because this is one half, these are both to the one, so we can multiply these bases together. Okay. Next question says, consider the segment shown on the grid. Determine the exact length of the line segment uh, in simplest mixed radicals. So the first one wants us to do the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this. So we have to figure out this is my hypotenuse, and we're going this by this. Okay. So how many spaces over? So we have c squared is equal to, well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I believe. Yep, yeah, it's 9. So we have 9 squared plus 1, 2, 3, plus 3 squared. Just wait. Yep, yeah, it's 3. And that's going to give us, just make sure I count it right, and we want c is the square root of 81 plus 9, okay? I skipped a step there. I'm going to say 80, c squared is equal to 81 plus 9. And then we have to square root both. So that is the same thing as square root of 90. Alright? Well, isn't this the same as 9 and 10? So that's the same thing as square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 10. Square And which is 3, root 10 is my answer. Now here, the part, second part, it wants us to use the distance formula. This will be normally given to you in a formula sheet or something like that. It's pretty much the same thing as Pythagorean theorem. Change in x squared plus the change in y squared. That's what that's saying. Okay? So my change in x is d is equal to square root of change in x, negative 6 minus 3 squared plus, and then we're going to go uh, y2, I did this, negative 2 minus 1. Okay, so we figure that out. That's going to give me 90, the square root of 90, because the same as before, which is equal to 3 root 10. That's it! It's kind of a nice little review. And we are on our second last set questions and then it's to challenge yourself and if you want to you could do those and I'll help you with them tomorrow but right now we're just going to do this and this will be our last little bit. So here we're going to convert from mixed into entire radicals. So I want to put this in. So basically isn't this here 2 the same as root 4? 
2 is essentially the same as root 4. So root 4 multiplied by root 6. What is that the same as? Root 4 multiplied by 6, which is because root 4 is the same as 2, which is root 24. Okay? Let's try the next one. We want negative 5. Well, isn't negative 5 the same as uh, square root of 25? Because negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Multiply the root of 7. So then we have to go 7 multiplied by 25 is going to give me a total of 175, I believe. Square root of 175. All right? Now here we're going to go with our last one, so we have two-thirds. So we want to put this inside the house, so we have to square these to put them in, right? Because it's multiplied by itself to put in, because that's what we took out, two of them. So it's two out of three squared, and then we square root, that's the same thing, times eight. So that's going to be the same thing as four out of nine multiplied by 18, okay? So this and this leaves us with 2, so I'm going to get the square root of 8 is my answer. Okay? And that's how we do that. Okay? Because if I went 4 times 18 divided by 9, well, I might as well divide by 9 first, so I get 2 multiplied by 4. So now. Alright, so now the other one says without using a calculator, arrange the following radicals in mixed order from greatest to least. So which is the biggest one? Well, hmm, I want to put this maybe into a mixed radical. Can it be a mixed radical? No, it can't. So that one's just a one then. Well, maybe the easiest way to do this is to convert them so they're all inside the house. So you can see which is the biggest number inside the house. So this one is going to be square root of 9 times 5, which is the square root of 45. The next one here, we have to square the 5 and then multiply by 3. So that's square root of 25 multiplied by 3, which is, because to, to put this in the house, we have to double it because there's no cubes there, which is going to get me square root of 75. Hmm. So far, this is the biggest. Last one, square root of 15, we leave like that. Now 6. That's 36. Okay, so that's going to be square root of 72. And now the last one is square root of 4 multiplied by square root of 6, which is the same as square root of 24. So now which one is the biggest? I'm going to say, does it say from least order from greatest to least? So we are going to go square root 75 is the biggest. Next is square root 72. Then I'm going to go square root 45. And then my last one is square root 24, then square root 15. So in other words, this is 3 root 5, and then we have, oops, sorry, not 3 root 5, 5 root 3. 72 is 6 root 2. 45 is, oops, 45, there we go, 3 root 5, and 24 is 2 root 6, and this is just root 15. So that is our order from the greatest to smallest. So, good luck on your assignment tomorrow, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Ask any questions if you need. I strongly encourage you to do this challenging part here, just to help you understand it. But if you don't get that, don't worry, maybe we'll work on this tomorrow as a group.